This is the Woven Exo Knight Easy Carry Light. And as you can see, it has a design of its own, with its super small form factor and super wide 175 degree TIR output. This little guy is a light producing tank with some really cool features. So let's check it out. Hello everyone and welcome to Handheld Light Reviews. Today I have the Wubbin XO Knight up for review and testing. Now this is not what Wubbin calls a flashlight. They call it an ECL. To them, it is an easy carry light. Now you guys might still just call it a flashlight or to some a torch. And it might be referred to as the Wubbin XO or X0 or XO or X0 Knight. Either way, I'm going to call it the XO and Wubbin sent this one to me to check out. And I have to admit, I am super excited to see the details based on just the specs and the description alone, not to mention the design and the form factor. I can't wait to get started. So like my other reviews, I'm going to do a quick unboxing, go over the published specifications, and then cover some of the features. Then I'm going to charge it up, do a Lux test to compare it to other lights that I've tested, and then I'll show you some real world examples. So let's open up the box and take a look. Cool packaging. Okay, here's what you get. The main unit, USB-C charging cable, couple extra O-rings, and the user manual. Pretty simple and straightforward. Let's check this thing out. Let's start with the published specifications. You can get the body in aluminum, brass, or titanium. And this one here is the titanium gray version. The light source is an Osram P9 in most colors. But if you want more realistic color in your light output, the Samsung LH351D is also available, but only in the aluminum black version, and it is not quite as bright as the whiter Osram P9 in the other colors. And I'll get to the colors in a little bit. Now note that this has a super wide 175 degree TIR lens, which makes sense if you've got this clipped onto your backpack, or LBV, or you just don't want to have to rotate your whole body like Batman to see something just to your right or your left if it's mounted to your body. And the output range in runtime and throw, I'm going to show you the spec chart right here if you want to pause this video and review it, but it does have brightness up to 1100 lumens and 125 meter throw on the highest turbo level, and has a max runtime of 130 hours on the lowest moon level of one lumen. But the quick notes is that it has a brightness of up to 1100 lumens and 125 meter throw on the highest turbo level and has a max runtime of 130 hours on the lowest level called the moon level, which is just one lumen. Now let's talk about the battery specs. It is powered by an included replaceable 18350 lithium ion battery and it can be fully charged in one and a half hours. And a couple of notes on this one. Uh, Wubbin recommends only using their included charger to charge the XO uh, to avoid from burning out the battery and circuit board. I'm not sure why but I did catch that it was mentioned somewhere in their documentation so I thought I'd pass it on to you. And I have confirmed that standard 18350 cells are compatible with this. But there doesn't seem to be an official tool to unscrew this. I'll see what I have around the shop that might work when the time comes. I'm sure it's not too difficult. I did some research and other people have said that you can use it with standard stuff. So I'll get to that later on, but I'll continue with the specs for now. It is IP68, waterproof up to two meters for up to one hour and drop resistant up to 1.5 meters, has a one year warranty. Now let's talk about the colors and options and pricing at the time of this video. You can get it in aluminum black. And again, that comes with the Samsung LA H351D for $59. You can get aluminum white for $69, brass for $86, and titanium gray, this is the one I'm showing you right now, for $139, and titanium green with a really cool circuit design for $188, and then a titanium cracked glaze, which is very unique, for $269. Now these prices are before any coupon codes or discounts. And if you order directly from Wubbin, use the link in the description below and use coupon code HLR25 and you'll get a pretty healthy 25% off your entire order at Wubbin, which means you can get the black version of this cool little light for less than 45 bucks. And also check out Amazon. They might have some of the colors available there. Again, I'll put links in the description to that as well. So if you like this video, using those links help you to get yours at no additional cost or effort to you. So do it and I appreciate it. Now here's my initial observations. 
I mean, you cannot miss this thing. It is angular, it is stubby, it is very compact, and far from a black tube-style flashlight, it looks almost futuristic. Now, the nice part about this is that the head does not protrude very much from the body, hardly at all, which is pretty unique as well. And I was doing some reading about this, and it was really designed to make sure that it didn't stick out. They wanted to keep that as flush as possible. So the size, 57 millimeters or 2.24 inches in length, 24.5 millimeters or just under an inch in width, and 28 millimeters high or just a little over an inch. And the weight, 82 grams or 2.9 ounces with the included battery, now, they don't list the differences in weight across aluminum, titanium, or brass materials, but I did weigh this titanium version, and it came in at 0.2 ounces lighter than the specs show at 2.7 ounces instead of the 2.9. So even though it's 2.7 ounces, this one just feels heavier, like a chunk of metal, and I guess it kind of is because it's not a tube, but it does feel just super, super solid, and I don't think you could easily hurt it. That I can tell you. The finish is nice and clean, Assembly is tight and simple despite the multi-angular design. And it doesn't have any knurling on it, as you can see, but I don't think it's needed because the multiple angles will allow you to get a good grip on it almost no matter how you hold it. The indicators here are laser engraved and they're deep. You can feel them when you run your finger across them. And as I showed you before, it does have a mentioning of what size battery it takes. So if you ever need to buy another, you don't have to look too far to remember which one to get. It does have this really super sturdy removable clip and it does have a magnetic tail cap so you can mount it just about anywhere that's metal. Now you see here it's got these slots it's got eight of these things six on the body and two on the button up here and you can add tritium vials of any colors you want. Now I can use some advice from you guys if you guys have a favorite source for good tritium vials please post them in the comments I'd like to know where you get yours. Now this power button here is the only button on the entire unit, and it does a couple of things. One is to, well of course, cycle through the lighting modes, which I'm gonna show you when I get this thing fully charged up. It is a lever style, and you might find yourself kind of flipping it back and forth if you often use something like a fidget spinner. It's kind of, kind of fun. There's two magnets, as you can see right here, that pull it down, and there's also two magnets right here in the lid that hold it together on the underside. Now these magnets aren't super strong. I mean, you can flip it open with no effort, but they definitely do the job just to keep it down there when moving around. Now what makes this button awesome is that you can just hit it with one finger to fire it up. Beneficial when you've got it on a backpack and you got your hands full and you can't grab it with your whole hand, you just bang the button and it'll work. Now underneath that power button is a soft switch that it presses against, which makes the light function. And so when you flip this up, you can also see that uh, the, the power button hides a USB-C port. Now, that port is not really protected, as you can see, otherwise, but it's still IPX8 rated against the elements. And on top here, there's an indicator that does a couple of things. It illuminates briefly when you first turn it on, and if you're at 90 plus a percent of power, it's blue steady, and then if between 90% and 40%, blue flashing, and if it's red steady, you're between 15% and 40% of the power, and then if it's red flashing, you're under 15% and you better recharge it. And it also does light up red while charging and blue when charging is complete. And speaking of which, let's charge this up so we can get to playing with the light output modes. Okay, now that it's all charged up, I wanna show you how the control lever works to cycle through the lighting modes. First, as you saw, it comes from the factory locked, so to unlock it, you click really fast four times. And there you see it's in moon mode, and then you click once to turn on and turn off. And if it's off and you double click, you get strobe, double click again, you get SOS, And then if you want to lock it again, four times again, and it blinks to let you know it's locked, and then now it's unlocked once again. So when it is on, double click goes to turbo, which is just super bright. And then double click again, goes to strobe, double click again, SOS, 
click to turn off. And when it's on, if you press and hold it, it will cycle through the modes. Moon, low, medium, and high. I like how it gradually transitions through each mode. It doesn't exactly step, and I think that's a nice touch. And it does have a memory, so the last one that you're using when you turn it off will be the same one that you get when you turn it back on. You can also program the four main modes to be a bit more specific to your needs than the default output. You first determine which brightness level, moon, low, medium, or high, that you like to customize by pressing and holding it. And then when you get to one of the four modes you want to customize, you got to be fast and you double click and then hold on the second click. And I don't know if you can see it here on the camera, but the brightness level cycles more precisely within the range of the selected mode. And when it reaches the upper range, the light flashes once and then starts cycling again. So when you release the power button, it'll remember the power setting that you left off on from that point, so when you go to that mode. Now here's a chart of the ranges for each mode if you want to pause and review it. Now personally, myself, I don't have much of a use for this other than perhaps making the moon mode brighter, but I'm sure that some of you have more uses for the mode programming, so I find it pretty cool. You can also reset it. When the flashlight is locked by clicking four times, there it's locked, single click the button, then double click the button, then triple click the button, and then the flashlight is reset to low mode, indicating that the button lock is released and the brightness levels are reset to default. Pretty cool. So now that you have a complete overview of this little light, I'm going to show you how bright it is in a basic controlled environment compared to the other flashlights that I've tested. I'm going to use my lux meter and my lumen tube to see how it does. And we're going to start with the moon setting. About seven lux. And we're going to step up to the low setting, a little over 50 lux, moving up to the medium setting, about 162 lux, and the high setting, about 784 lux, and then turbo. About 3,030 lux. Okay, let's see what this looks like outside at night. And if you haven't seen it before, this is my backyard. You can see my fence and my chairs and my fire pit and all that. And beyond that are trees that are around 50 feet away, just on the other side of my creek. And here we are in my backyard at night, just to give you an idea of what this could look like. Keep in mind that your environment may be different, so your results may be different. But let's start with the moon mode. Let's see if you can see anything at all. Probably not. So, let's step up to low. May not be able to see anything, but I sure can with the naked eye. Medium. There we go. Now you can see stuff. Not so much to the trees that are 50 feet back there. So let's go to high. I could start to see the trees back there, especially up here in the branches that are a little closer than 50 feet. And now on turbo. And boy, does that do a good job firing things up pretty good. So there you have it. What it could look like through the different modes in the dark in an environment like mine. So now... Let's head on down to the creek and see what it looks like down there. This is my favorite part. Okay, I'm walking down to my creek using the low setting and you could see just fine on the low setting. Moonlight, a little tough to see where you're going, but let's uh, get down there. I mean, you're not gonna see much on moonlight. I mean, that's, you gotta get like, look right down at your feet for that sort of thing, but then, we go up to low, you can start to see things about 10 feet in front of you, no problem. 
about 20 with the naked eye. The camera doesn't do too good. But then if we crank it up to medium, start to see things a little clearer, especially from the 20 foot mark, give or take. I could probably see 30 or 40 feet here when it starts to get dim. And then high does pretty good. So now let's see what turbo does. Pretty amazing for such a little light to have so much range and has such a wide beam on it. Does a pretty good job. I'm impressed. I really am. Tell me what you think in the comments of this thing. I mean, for as tiny as what it is, what do you think of this? But for now, let's go back inside and see how it manages heat. Here we have a time lapse using my FLIR thermal camera, and I've got the Wubbin set to turbo mode, which is the highest mode, and it gets up to about 120, 121 degrees Fahrenheit, or right around 49 degrees Celsius, pretty quickly at about the one minute mark. And then it levels off perfectly and it stays really, really steady. I tested it a few times. And here in this test, just for fun, I turned it around so you could see the different heat areas on all four sides of it. But overall, this does pretty good. I think personally for my use, this is more of a hands-free light than a hand-held light. I can see this attached to my backpack or magnetized to a metal surface or clipped onto my shirt pocket or even just sitting on my workbench when I need it. Again, for my personal use, it feels slightly less natural to use it primarily as a handheld flashlight, you know, like a, like a tube flashlight. You might need to experiment to find your favorite way of holding it, depending on your hand size. I think the one finger power button charging port combo is pretty unique. You kind of need to play with it a couple of times to get used to the functions, but it's not hard to be an instant expert at it once you start playing with it. But I got to tell you, I really love this flashlight. As the aluminum version is less than 60 bucks before any discount, it does a pretty good job for the money, especially for a flashlight that can do what this one does. Again, to get yours, I suggest you order directly from Wubbin and use the link in description and enter coupon code HLR25 at checkout. Save a killer 25% off your entire order. Again, using that link or the link to Amazon that I also include helps out this channel at no additional cost or effort to you. So thanks in advance for that. And thanks for watching this video. I'll be back soon with another flashlight review and Lux test. So until then, consider subscribing and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Mm -hmm.